party uh, is entitled to any gift okay. that is above 250 United States dollars. So receiving gift above 250 dollars uh, is a violation of the law. So if I do, if anybody give me a yacht, it should be for the state. I should, I should turn it over the state. If I keep it personal, that's a violation of the law. Okay. Somebody give me two hundred thousand dollars, Mercedes, that's a violation of the law because it's above two hundred fifty United States dollars. So I, if I do that, I will resign because I will not want to bring disgrace to the Nim Gonglu or to my mother's people of Bone County in 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 Ulota or from my from my father's people Yawa Mesno and Nimba County or to you people all of the advocates the civil society uh, members who are saying now we have a civil society man trying to be president this is mm -hmm. our time to be president who have all that confidence in me I am not going to disgrace them okay therefore if you are minister in my government uh, after three months the auditor bring me a report that you are building a three hundred thousand dollar house a story building in your hometown or in Monroe or anywhere, I will have you dismissed immediately. It dismissed, I didn't say suspended, because you are not a civil servant, you serve at the will and pleasure of the president. Will you be looking at the president pers uh, for me from the family's background as well? You, your, what? If your great grandfather uh, will something to you, mm. it will be in your asset declaration. If your, your father in law gave you something, it would already be in your asset declaration. So there's no surprise there. It would be on the internet. Maybe I have a lot of money, you know, and what I'm actually still in government could commensurate with what I actually have. If well. you have money, it should be declared before taking out office. If you keep it secret, you can't justify it. So mm -hmm. everything has to be transparent. We're talking about open governance. Open governance. So now, when I when when they say you're building that three uh, three hundred thousand dollar house, it comes to me. Then you don't enjoy my pleasure anymore. I will just meet you immediately because you're a political appointee. Okay. Turn you over to the Liberal Anti Corruption Commission for full investigation and prosecution. And then when you are found guilty, you go to jail for five to ten years. But, Councillor, I mean, look at the society we live in. It's a gullible society. People are your friends. Even those that you actually are the, put in the government, they are also your friends. Will you be able to prosecute them? Yes, I agree. I have loyalty, unreserved loyalty to two C's my conscience and my country. No compromise. Okay, so, another issue. So, yeah. so now let me complete. <laughs> when, when, when this is important for the public. So okay. when a man goes to jail for five to ten years, and his assets are taken, his family starts suffering because of his corruption, stealing from government, and he will get about four or five ministers in jail. The question I asked in all the rural areas I went to, I said, do you think any but any minister in government want to steal again? They said no. So if that's how we end corruption. Then the people who can steal inside government will be afraid to steal. The ones who are go who also are government can be going to pray people, going to medicine poor, sacrificing poor children to become minister. They will be scared to come into government. Then government will be strict because government is a place to serve, not to steal. Not to steal. Okay. Uh, the, on, on May 7, uh, uh, 2021, uh, President at the time of the, uh, the Liberian Bar Association, at the time said that the executive committee of the association was considering uh, of course uh, the issue of working with uh, the national legislature uh, for the impeachment of judges that were actually found guilty of misconduct or corruption where where are you now in this well you know i mean of course i'm not president of bar mm. anymore yeah um but you, you we, started we that we didn't we didn't do that but there's no statute of limitation all right for for doing that um judges that are being found guilty of ethical breach uh once that's good the record the supreme court has, has approved that mm. the next step is for impeachment so it is not off the table it's not off the table if you like that what will you do when i become president of this country yes of course oh yes every judge that is on ethical mm. that has been judge those ethical, are your friends though I don't care about friendship. I care more about my country than friendship. Because it is friendship that has kept this country behind. You know, I've prosecuted a friend before, a very close friend of mine. And I'll cross his army and he told me, I don't want to call his name on the air. He said, Oh, this too is like your council of Gonglo or pressing, cross examining me uh, in a criminal case. Yes, Liberia is higher than each of us. Mm. And we have to take it that way. So when I become president, not only what the, 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 will be brought to me, but I will have intelligence checking on judges because we have to end corruption in the judiciary, you know, so that 
we have justice without fear, sale, or favor. And, and that will help this country because it will make more Liberians and foreigners invest in the country because they know when they invest, their investment will be protected by the judiciary. Okay. Well, if you are just joining us, this is EOM 98.7 FM, the United Methodist Radio. And this is the official voice of the Liberia Island Conference, the United Methodist Church. Well, the Councillor uh, Adonis Parin, uh, you actually uh, visited the diaspora Liberian in the United States of America, uh, making, uh, of course, uh, making a case as well as uh, the high level meeting at the U.S. State Department to actually combat uh, pervasive corruption to uh, free the people from poverty. I did, and then my message, my message resonated very well. We see no we, are in a, we, are, we are in the process. We, you know, I'm the only presidential contender that is telling people what I intend to do. I don't keep secret. Someone told me the other day, when are your friends will copy from you? Why you talk all your own thing? I say, I want all of the contenders to copy from me so that <laughs> Liberia can be a good place. I'm not a selfish person. I want the best for Liberia. Even a president, George, we are copies what I intend to do for Liberia, I'll be happy. You know, I mean, I even con contest. All if right. it takes all of my prescriptions, I mean, I even you just, you just be, because I mean... Because I, I enjoy being a lawyer. I enjoy being free. Mind you, being a president, you're not really free. Everywhere you go, security behind you, all mm -hmm. that. So it's a major sacrifice to make, to take that level of freedom away. But you do it for the good of your country. And, and I want to be a project manager. I don't want to be an ordinary president with all the platform and pageant. Century. Okay. How, the, Liberia, to be real president at 20, 30 years from now, this is not a normal country. It has to be normalized. And to normalize it, you have to be a project manager to normalize it. Every aspect of human life in this country is in trouble. Like now we're talking about rice. Yeah. In this country that has fertile land, from Cape Man to Cape Amos, right? We should be growing rice and exporting rice. Is it not a shame that India, that has more than 1 billion people, is producing rice, feeding itself, and selling the excess to us, for me, is a shame. What could be your strategy? We will grow rice. How? We will grow rice. My government will revitalize the Agriculture and Cooperative Development Bank, and through the Agriculture and Cooperative Development Bank, we will give a 15-year interest-free loan through machines, tractors, combine harvesters, every farming implement, including fertilizers, to the farmers of Liberia, in a, a true farmers cooperatives from Cape Man to Cape Palmas, organized by CDA, not to grow oil palm, not to grow rubber, not to grow cocoa or coffee. We don't eat cocoa or, or coffee, but to grow rice, to grow pepper, to grow cassava, to grow the things that we eat. Because for me, it's a shame that we're importing pepper from Guinea. The pepper that we import from Guinea comes from the Li Liberian side, the place that used to be Liberia before the forest area, because a, a lot of uh, the, the land area of Guinea, you know, Guinea has savanna, not like us, right? The place where they really grow the food is a place that used to be called Liberia, but our part of Liberia territory. So we have majority, most of the land here. How come we are not doing it? Because government does not have a program to grow food. My government will insist or have any an elaborate program for to, for for growing uh, rice and other food items. I asked question in the in the villages that I went over the past seven days. Have you seen any agricultural extension worker over the past ten years? They said no. Before the war, agricultural extension workers used to be on motorbike, growing from village to village, advising farmers. They said no. So it means agriculture is not working in a rural area where food should be produced. I will ensure that agriculture is robust in this country. You know, we can't we can't feed ourselves animals from cutlasses and hooves. I don't care how strong you are using mm. cutlasses and hooves, you can't produce a, a three clean beds of rice. It, it has to be conventional now. And not possible. <laughs> yeah. So system farming can make it. Okay, now, uh, okay, so that of course uh, another issue again I'd like to know. Let's look at the proliferation of uh, political parties that are actually hurting this country. Yeah. yeah, too many parties we have in this country. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I respect Liberian voters. I'm not one of those say uh, they got problem with Liberian voters. So. Yes, they put in care, rice, money, everything to them. But they always make their choice based on how they feel. 
They sometimes there are 23 uh, uh, political parties. When you go to election, some party can get only 500 votes or 600 votes, 300 votes. So yeah, they can go, right? But the people can choose. Usually, it's not more than five political parties, including the American Communist Party and all. But there are two parties that the American people have decided to choose in their country. In Sierra Leone, got many parties, but the SLP, SLPP and APC, right? In Ghana now, it's MPP and NDC. But Kwame Nkrumah's party is still the CPP. So people have a right. You don't want people to cause noise and be demonstrating why you're restricting the, the establishment of political parties. Let them go ahead. Even now in Liberia, don't they, they, they are all the presidential contenders. But you hear four names. There were three. And I, and I came in, and I'm surprised that immediately I came in, my name became the fourth. <laughs> right? So, 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 and there were candidates before me right. who had participated in election before. And they are there. But now when they can't name, the current president, George, uh, 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 former vice president, Joe Park, uh, comes and they say, Gonglo. I didn't even know, even before I became a standard bearer two weeks ago in Banga Mani, I already reached the fourth. So, although there are many contenders, the Liberian people know the relevant people. So, you could climb up anytime from uh, the fourth? No, I'm going to be number one <laughs> by, by January. I'm going to be number one. Why? Okay. okay. Because I'm very clear on my message about what I want to do. I'm not afraid All right. about what I want to do. When I say, for example, I'll fight You corruption. are so optimistic, uh, Councillor. Yes. I am. I've been living in my life, and I don't think. Are you trying to maybe, uh, uh, maybe get rid of fright from me, or from you? Be, no. Uh, by saying that, me, you may actually come. No, us. I think you should even be saying, "I'm, I'm not trying to frighten the other people." They, sh they shouldn't be frightened. The reality is, the name Councillor Tiawan Se Gonglo has been. It's a household name in Liberia. You can't contest that. Everybody knows my name. All right. The only thing is that I'm being known. In a new way, as a politician, not the poor man's lawyer, again, not the advocate, not the critic of government, all right, not the man who has been to jail. The question is, what any contender in this country? There's nobody who can say they have sacrificed anything for this country equal to me. Look at me as a teacher. I, I taught people who are leading the country to the vice president of my student at the University of Liberia in 1982-83. Uh, Justice Janet, Justice Kaba, uh, Bernie Samka, leading him. Even current, current senator of Lofa County, Joseph Jala. Now, can they were all your students. They were all your students. <laughs> they were all my students. Do you, can you say that as a teacher, you're not a contributor? Biggest contributor in any country. Right. You're transforming minds. I've been doing these things. I teach at the police academy on a voluntary basis. The current police director sat in my senior officer training course before. Right. You know, so, so I've been in life. Of Liberian people, I do work okay, shops before we go for a break. Let country. me just break this other one out to you. Uh, the issue of a corrupt official that uh, were dismissed, especially by the, the president, uh, are now opting to run in 2023. What could be your own biggest? But let me make correction that they were not dismissed. The president did not have he did not have the, the strength, the courage to dismiss them. <laughs> we put pressure on him. Yeah. I was one of those putting pressure, these people can't be working in government. And then he he asked them secretly to resign. Yeah. And they turned in the and resignation. Then, and then they turned the resignation. Yeah, they are yeah, out. Yeah. But they are, they but, are actually but, actually now opting to run now uh, as. Uh, I don't think Liberian people should vote for them. I don't even think that they should be allowed to to run for the election. Um, but like the Americans say, they don't control our internal situation. For sure. Um, but I don't think they are qualified because they disgraced us. This is the first time in our history that ministers, that any minister has been sanctioned by any country in the world for corruption. You know, ministers, officials of the government were sanctioned before they were put a travel ban for their part in the war and all of that. But for corruption, you know, corruption is actually a crime, I consider a crime against humanity because it takes bread from the rice, food from the mouth of the children. It makes it difficult to have medicine in our government hospitals. Uh, it makes it difficult for us to build our roads. You are old enough to know that when you are growing up in this country, they will know that Lofa was cut off from Monrovia mm -hmm. because there were public work yards in every county. And yeah, public work. Rural development. Yes, and public work uh, and later on, rural development machines used to re 
re rehabilitate the road during dry season mm -hmm. and during rainy season when there were enough small things, Paul worried to despite the machine there and it go and fix it. So from Cape Amos to Monrivia, people used to drive like 40 miles per hour and make it. Today it doesn't happen because of corruption. Government does not have money to put road maintenance crew all over the country. You see? So it is all due to corruption. Okay, let me, let me take some calls quickly uh, this morning. Uh, if you are just joining us, uh, this is National Hour, and uh, we are actually uh, having a cross section of issue of national concern on uh, this uh, radio year. Uh, this morning, uh, we have uh, with on the studio a presidential aspirant, uh, Councillor T1 Segonglu. He's here this morning, and we are actually looking at our country. What Liberia needs, and how can it be resurrected? Who should actually run this country? Should it be politicians? Should it be business people? Should it be religious people? Or should it be ordinary people? Well, let's get to the line and see if we can pick up some calls this morning. 0 triple seven triple seven nine eight seven. Zero triple eight seven six nine six seven five. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for your concern. This, uh, you are immediately welcome on my campaign team. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. 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 Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, in our studio this morning. What I want to tell you, I don't have a question to ask, but what I want to tell you is the extent to the president that we pray that it happens. Please don't give up the Senate 30,000 for the budget. For the budget, you have to say the for that statement. Never. Okay, he will answer that question. Let me be okay. I'm only finding a very constant district. Thank you ever so much. Thank you so much. Let me pick up another call quickly. Let me see where is this on the line. Uh, good morning. Yeah, let's hear you quickly the name and where are you calling from? Let's hear you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I pick up another call. Good morning. Good morning. Let's hear you the name and where are you calling from? Okay, the name is Jun Tumo Wright. And I'm at Chia Road. Yeah, Jun Tumo Wright. And of course, uh, you can actually, actually call. Make your point, please. Thank you very much. Okay, let, let me say thanks to Kansasa Bongo for his uh, discussion this morning. He has a lot of good
All right. Thank you ever so much. She's listening. Good. Let's speak up this uh, call. Yeah. Good, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Dollar. This is Jones and George. Oh, thank you for the correction. Let's hear you. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones says now we need a radical president who would trust the Jews. Hmm. Criminals. You know, because, I mean, this country we are in is over Jews now. Every now and then, people speak from us. The poor people, then they the committee that will not work for nobody. This country, every time committee, committee, committee. Why are people not prosecuting people for their wrongdoing? Okay. That's true. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. All right, let's pick up this one. Then. Good morning. Okay, we'll pick up two or three more calls and then we'll get back to our studio discussing this morning. The, the counselor, uh, he will be able to answer this question. Let's pick up this call. Oh, no, I will not pick up, I will not take feedback. Please walk away from your manager. And let's have a very good conversation together. Good morning. Good morning. Let's hear you the name and where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm Paul Cody. I do join you from the fan up there to be specific to Yellow Bailey. Uh, I want to appreciate your video girl. Uh, Counselor, thank you ever so much for the dream you have for the background people. And I hope and pray that God wish us all in your endeavor as we are about to support you. The only thing I want to recommend to you uh, as you We'll be taking a tail place. I strongly believe from uh, the runoff, you will be taking a tail place so that you will join the Honorable Joseph Nima <laughs> to, to, to to have the same dream. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you much. Right. The points are taken in. Thank you so much. Uh, let's pick up this call. Good morning. Good morning. Let's hear you the name and where are you calling from? Uh, this is Nicholas Baxter calling from uh, Fender's area. Calling from Fender. Let's I hear you. Think, yeah, I think... Uh, Honorable Gongo in there, you know, I admire his, uh, his presentation. My fear is the Liberian, uh, you know, mm -hmm. my fear is with the Liberian people. Somebody that would come up to bring up a very good platform and that has good plan for this country, we would not go for that person. You know, my fear, I really wish that I, uh, that I can pay for him, but the problem is we as Liberian, we as Liberians, look at I, want, I really want him to have a debate. Okay. I want him, I want him to have a debate so that he can, so he can present his travel. Look what, look what he's saying. Thank you so much. Everything he's saying. Okay. No, thank you so much. Let's pick up another call. Yeah, all, right. all right. Thank you so much. Let's pick up another call. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Did you know me? Thank you very much for the recognition. Let's hear you quickly. And uh, let me say good morning to Honorable Congo. Good morning. Honorable Congo, your platform is rich. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. This is my last caller. Uh, good morning. Yeah. Yeah, you're my good last morning. caller. Let's hear you the name and where are you calling from? My name is David Bato and I join you from Kiyama. Let's, let's hear you. Dago, man. Dago. And I asked the dad this question. All the platform will alert everything. But today when you're about to work out, call you to join him, will you? Okay, that's a question you ask. Okay, thank you so much. I like that question. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm not picking up any more calls uh, because I don't have luxury of time, man. Uh, but of course, let me get back to the, the counselor. Uh, okay, this one of my colleagues. Okay, she's all right. Okay, uh, I'm not picking up any more calls. I'm so sorry that I would not be picking up calls. Let me get down to uh, the counselor. Counselor, I think so you listen to think the question. Were, of the I think two questions, really. Most of the things were coming. Mm -hmm. But let me deal with the last question. Someone okay. said. Um, yeah, you should join uh, yeah. the book, huh? Look, this election, the my decision to agree to enter the race is not about position. That's why I hope there was a name called something else other than president. I'm a transformer. I'm very I'm a straight shooter, I'm radical, I'm not diplomatic. I don't know how to say, oh, let everyone be that small country here, let them, let everything be like that, let bygone be bygone. I don't know that one. I know how to deal with issues. And so 
not just Ambassador Barker, a dozen contender in this race, who is prepared for the president's salary to be open to the public salary benefits, for the president to subject himself to lifetime audit, I mean it, to subject himself to a lifetime audit, and to subject all to lifetime audit every three months, you know, uh, for that transparency, and to, to be able to, to prosecute people and seize their properties. If you, Baka or any other candidate, is prepared to issue an executive order that says any minister or official of government that interferes with police investigation, police, I mean immigration, anything. Looking at your avocado. Okay, you, know, you sounded very, very tough. Very I have hard. always been that way. That's why nobody has brought indecent proposal to me in government. Well, Solicitor mm -hmm. General or when our uh, executive assistant, the president or minister of labor, people come in and say, ah, you won't go to that man, you will not accept him. The thing is, when you establish your reputation as anti-corrupt, as someone who does not pick and choose, you free yourself. Nobody comes to you. It's just like as a teacher, one thing I've realized from teaching at the university, no student comes to me and say, please help me put five point all my grade. Because from the time I started teaching in 1982, I've been straight. I free myself. I hear some instructor talking, this student can become here as nobody asked me because I already know my reputation. So mm -hmm. you do that. I intend to make all pregnant women in this country get medication without paying for it. Free. Free medication. I intend to make kindergarten guiding from kindergarten to 12th grade free. Free quality compulsory education. Every child in this country has free tests. But whether you go to private school or government school, I've already contacted in America. Yeah, so this, could be, be so, this could be political chicanery. No. Yes, when, of course. When I went to America, people have been saying that they have been me. doing it. Please respect me. I don't know about people. I okay. know about myself. But you're going to do I that. I have an established reputation. Okay. I tell people to judge me by my track record. All right. I have said on the radio, how many persons in this country any of the politicians can come on the radio and say, I challenge anybody in this country from Cape Man to Cape Amos to say, Kazo Gonglo, serve as solicitor general, you are corrupt, or as minister of labor, you are corrupt, or as executive assistant, he took money. I discipline myself. I used to pray to God not to allow me to cross the, to, to cross the land that I, I shout at other people for. So I discipline myself. That way I'm free to speak the way I do. I will cooperate with anybody who agrees with my prescription. Because I'm not looking for a position. Whether somebody want to be vice president of me or president of me, you got to have character close to mine. Okay. And you have to agree with my prescription who put Liberia first. And then I intend to create, to reduce taxes, to create jobs all over the country. Every 50 miles away from Monterey, you put your company that employs Liberians, we drop the corporate taxes. In fact, we'll give you five-year tax holiday. And you put your factory. So, for example, you have a factory in Cape Amos, you pay less, or pay maybe zero corporate tax. But if you employ 500 persons in your factory, your 500 persons get income, government will get income tax, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when they pay house rent to people, the, the house owners will get income, government will tax that one. They will go to the market, they will buy goods and services, people will generate income, government will tax the income. So my economic so policy will generate a lot of money. Government. So my economic yeah. policy will be putting money in the pockets of ordinary people right. and putting money in the pockets of government. And then the next thing is that that kind of economic policy will reduce the massive rural urban migration. Monero was built for three hundred thousand people. Today people come from Cape Amos, they come from Vanjama all over the country for greener pastures. Thinking that because the economy is concentrated in Monero. I want to decentralize the economy by this kind of attractive policy. When I do that, when it slows down the rural urban migration, people stay home, people will not be coming because, you know, the economy and, and crime are related. When things are difficult, people have to eat. They will commit crime. I'm not justifying crime, but when people come to Monterey, young people, and they come here, no job, then they get frustrated. Somebody come, I mean, what you say now you're frustrated? Can't go there one low of marijuana. So, so can then after that, they go into the ghetto, and then from the ghetto, yeah. they get into armed robbery, raping women, jacking bags at night, all of that. But if they have jobs in the counties, you're in Maryland, you got a job. Where you, where, 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 where you want to come to the Monroe? You live in your community, you got a job there. You have everything. Some will there. never come here. Okay. So, uh, uh, Councilor, of course, uh, another issue here again. Uh, do you 
think you can certainly uh, make Liberia to be corruption free. If I like can make see. Liberia to be corruption free because I will make Liberia not free for the corrupt people. Today, the land of liberty, sweet land of liberty is sweet and, and they are free for corrupt people, rogues. I want sweet land of liberty to be sweet land of liberty for the majority of Liberians and to make it difficult for the corrupt people, people of Liberia. Okay. To make it difficult for the corrupt I, in people. In fact, when I become president, after six years, you'll be begging people to become president because all the eating for the presidency, I will dry out. Wow. Yes. Is it from your heart? I, and from my heart, I want to leave a name in this country so that in the future, it takes one man to transform the situation. It took Sir Sarisi Kama in Botswana. He was not a corrupt president. After he took power in Botswana in 1966, the budget was $3 million. But he established and he, a government based on integrity, no stealing. He left a name. The people worship him today. Okay. All other presidents after him were presidents of integrity. So by 2004, the budget from $3 million had gone to $4 billion. Less than $3 million. Who in our country can be happy? Everybody enjoys. Yes. Okay. Uh, the, my last question to you will be, uh, of course, uh, looking at the uh, the hundred million uh, drugs that were actually uh, arrested uh, through the the help of the U.S. Uh, government. Um, how do you see it? The drugs didn't fall for heaven. I want people arrested. There must be full investigation. It is easy to 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 trace the the the, the chain. Liberia a, a place a drug paradise for drug dealers no it's not good for our country you know and and, and, and as you are closing I want to say the president should be truthful to people this question of rice if rice was plentiful on the market the prices would not be going up all this explanation they gave me is unacceptable I've been in government before people who bring rice in the country bring it to sell it and they want to make their profit so rice is not here if rice was here it would be all over the place you know it would be all over the place yeah i was in banga yesterday a cup of rice was more than hundred dollars in banga and, and the people are poor they're getting poor every day this the government multiplies poverty for example people who are pension pension teachers nurses police are not getting their pay and their children have to go to school they have to pay, pay for medical treatment that's why I say my, my, my plan calls for free medication for pregnant women and free medication for their children from zero to five years, free medication for all librarians who are 65 years and above. Because when you are 65 years, the possibility of getting a job is hard. So the state has to take Well, thank off. you ever so much. That's the voice of uh, the learned counselor, counselor Teo Ansia Gonglo, been uh, sharing breakfast with all. But before we leave you, what could be your departing comment? Just in one minute. My departing comment is... Liberians to choose should choose between the broom. The symbol of broom is to sweep corruption for Liberia. This election must be decided on those who are for the broom and those who are against the broom. Those who are against the broom are the people who want to perpetuate corruption. I want to fight corruption. I'm calling on all Liberians to get behind me to fight corruption. So you are using the broom. That is the only impediment that is stopping Liberians. To you are using the broom. I'm using the broom. To and sweep corruption keep away. This broom until I become president. Every day of my presidency. When I carry the broom around, the corrupt people heart can be beating. So anyway, so anywhere you go, your broom is I'm calling be... upon you and every librarian in the in the library cities in the country to start carrying the broom. Here. Okay. Well, thank you. That was so much. The voice of uh, the, uh, the council.